Hai Sobat Samuel, berikut ini kami tunjukkan cara berinvestasi menggunakan aplikasi Star Mobile. Caranya sangat praktis dan tentunya mudah. Mari kita simak bersama-sama. Pertama-tama, unduh atau download aplikasi Star pada smartphone Anda. Tentu saja bisa melalui Google Play Store untuk Android dan juga App Store untuk iPhone. Setelah terdownload, buka aplikasi Star dan kemudian klik register online. Untuk saat ini, registrasi online hanya untuk WNI yang sudah memiliki IKTP saja ya. Lalu Sobat Samuel dapat melengkapi data-data pribadi Anda sesuai dengan IKTP tersebut. Dalam proses pembukaan rekening online ini, Sobat Samuel dapat memilih untuk menggunakan rekening dana nasabah atau RDN di BCA atau BRI sesuai dengan rekening bank yang sudah Anda miliki. Untuk pemilik rekening bank lain, Anda dapat membuka rekening Star Samuel Sekuritas melalui website atau offline. Untuk kode referral, Sobat Samuel bisa mengisinya dengan nama teman atau kerabat yang menyarankan aplikasi Star kepada Anda. Kalau tidak ada yang menyarankan atau merefer, kode tersebut dapat dikosongkan saja. Setelah mengisi data nomor telepon dan juga email, kode OTP akan otomatis dikirimkan ke email Anda sehingga Anda perlu memasukkan kode OTP yang tertera pada email tersebut di aplikasi Star. Setelah melakukan verifikasi OTP tersebut, Sobat Samuel dapat melanjutkan mengisi data diri sesuai dengan IKTP. Oh iya, Sobat Samuel yang belum memiliki NPWP masih tetap dapat membuka rekening Star dengan cara mengisinya di kolom NPWP dengan angka 0, yaitu sebanyak 15 kali. Selesai melengkapi data pribadi, pilih upload dokumen di menu bar bawah, kemudian upload foto IKTP, foto Anda bersama IKTP, dan juga foto tanda tangan Anda di atas kertas putih polos ya. Setelah semua data diinput, tunggu proses verifikasi data dan pengaktifan akun serta RDN dengan waktu tunggu maksimal 1 kali 24 jam ya selama hari kerja. Jika waktu tunggu tersebut terlewat, Sobat Samuel dapat mengecek email secara berkala karena kemungkinan ada kekurangan data atau ada kesalahan upload dokumen. Tentunya, tim Star Samuel Sekuritas akan menghubungi Anda terkait kekurangan data atau ada kesalahan proses melalui email atau telepon. Jika data sudah diverifikasi dan lengkap, registrasi akan diproses yang ditandai dengan adanya email pre-activation, berisikan client code, dan juga password login. Dengan memasukkan keduanya di login akun, Anda sudah bisa melihat market info di aplikasi Star. Namun, untuk mulai melakukan trading, Sobat Samuel harus menunggu proses pembuatan RDN atau rekening dana nasabah. Setelah proses pembuatan RDN selesai, akan ada email masuk, dan Anda harus transfer ke nomor rekening yang sudah tertera di email ya Sobat Semua, sebagai syarat pengaktifan rekening tersebut. Anda bisa transfer dengan jumlah berapapun, karena kami tidak membatasi jumlah minimal untuk pengaktifan rekeningnya. Setelah deposit berhasil, tunggu email selanjutnya ya untuk mendapatkan PIN trading. Dan setelah mendapatkan PIN trading, maka Sobat Samuel bisa langsung mulai ikut trading di aplikasi Star. Bagaimana? Mudah dan cepat kan? Selamat mulai perjalanan investasi ya Sobat Samuel bersama Star. Jangan lupa ya untuk follow YouTube, Instagram, Clubhouse, dan Telegram kita untuk tidak ketinggalan berbagai update dari Samuel Sekuritas Indonesia. Salam cuan! Halo Sobat-Sobat Samuel, sekarang Sobat Samuel sudah bisa pesan IPO langsung dari aplikasi Star Mobile loh. Bagaimana sih caranya? Yuk simak video tutorial ini. Pertama-tama, masuk ke aplikasi Star Mobile. Lalu, pilih menu Ball dan Post di bawah dan isi PIN Trading. Klik tombol Burger di sisi kiri, lalu pilih menu IPO Dan kemudian, pilih sub menu IPO Pada halaman ini, kamu bisa melihat berbagai pilihan saham yang ada dalam proses IPO. Mulai dari Book Building, Public Offering, dan juga Listed. Pada segmen Public Offering, kamu bisa memilih saham IPO yang dapat dipesan. Pilih salah satu saham IPO yang ingin kamu pesan dan klik order pada saham IPO tersebut. Setelah detailnya terbuka, scroll ke bawah dan klik input e-IPO. Setelah halaman pernyataan minat pemesanan terbuka, 
klik checkbox pernyataan persetujuan, syarat dan ketentuan, lalu klik setuju dan lanjutkan. Masukkan lot yang ingin dipesan, dan pastikan dana RDN tersedia, lalu klik Submit. Bila pemesanan IPO berhasil, kamu akan masuk pada halaman terima kasih yang menandakan bahwa transaksimu sudah selesai. Untuk melihat status pesanan saham IPO pada aplikasi Star Mobile, klik menu Bal dan Post, klik tombol Burger, lalu pilih menu IPO, dan kemudian pilih submenu IPO status. Kamu dapat cek apakah pemesanan sahammu sudah masuk pada halaman tersebut. untuk memastikan keberhasilan transaksimu. Nikmati Iporia dengan Star Mobile. Salam cuan! Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to this event, which is the corporate update with MD Pictures. I'm Baras Farhan from Samo Securitas Indonesia, and currently I will be your moderator for today's event. So with this event, we we are joining here today by David from MD Pictures, the director for for MD Pictures, and also Anan, who is the CFO for MD Pictures. Hi, Dave. Hi, Anan. Thank you for coming here. Greetings. How are you? Okay, great. And Namaste, so, semuanya. Hi. And also, and so the presentation, and so we will have a, a presentation from Dave and Anan side, and then maybe we will open up to some Q and A. And then, uh, so bear in mind that uh, this event will be held in English. So, so if all of you have have any questions that would you like to ask in Indonesian, maybe you can type it in the chat, and, and then I'll translate it for David and on. Or if you have some questions, you can directly uh, un- raise your hand and unmute yourself, and then just go go ahead and ask the question. Okay, I think that is all for now. So next, I will turn it up to Dave and Anand to give the, the presentation. Dave, the time is yours. All right. Um, so I'm going to spend a, just a very brief amount of time looking at some of the history of MD. I, I think many of you on this call are pretty aware, aware of our company and where we've been. And then I'll focus on uh, some of the events that are more current and what's been taking place over the last um, you know six months or so. that is uh, interesting in our company growth and fueling uh, our future. So um, uh, please bear with me if, there, if there's information here that is already obvious to you um, and um, feel free at the end of this, we'll have questions and answers and we'll be able to dive into anything of particular interest to you. Um, just this year um, in Bali, we celebrated the 20th year of MD Pictures. Thank you. Uh, so we celebrated our 20th year in business um, in 2002. MD Entertainment was founded, um, and we began in the TV business, uh, producing thousands and thousands of hours of Cinetrons. Um, MD became quite successful at that. Um, at one point in time, we were producing seven hours of programming every single day. So that's 365 days a year. Um, and basically, MD owned the, t- the prime time time slots, uh, six, seven hours of programming every day. And during that time, we learned that content is king, that consumers and the audience would go to wherever channel the content was playing that they wanted to watch. Um, and MD would jump ship and jump over to another channel. And then that channel would become number one. Um, we then moved into the movie business in 2006 and um, started with just a few films in the cinema, um, broke our first record, first record of many in 2008 when Ayat Ayat Chinta um, had 3.7 million tickets sold, which was highest box office ever in the history of Indonesia. And it broke Titanic's record that had been held for 10 years up to that point. And over time, we've produced um, the majority of Indonesia's most popular films. And you know, MD is in the content business. We produce for TV, for movies, and now for online. And across all of these distribution channels, we have the largest market share and the most success of any studios in Indonesia. 
by 2018, we were a public company, the first and only production house in Indonesia to be public. And that continues to this day. We now have international investors uh, coming in. There's a 10 cent uh, placed a minority investment in our company in 2021. And we have many other international houses that have invested in MD since that point in time. Let me explain just a little bit about what it is that we are. You know, MD produces content. We produce TV, animation, um, films, online OTT content, and that is our asset. If you can imagine where we were in the construction business and we build buildings, you'd be able to look and see the buildings that we built. In the case of films, what's interesting is you never see our assets on the balance sheet. Uh, when we produce a film, we write it off over a four year period at an accelerated um, depreciation. So our primary assets, as is the case with all media companies, don't appear on a balance sheet. Where they appear is on your TV screens and in the movie theaters and on your streaming platforms like Disney and Netflix and um, in Amazon Prime, but you don't see it on our balance sheet. So we have the largest library of the top grossing movies in Indonesia. We have the largest library of original series productions in Indonesia. And over almost two dozen films that have gone straight to OTT platforms. OTT means the streaming platforms over the top. Um, and we always have a number of films that are in production. I think right now we have um, six or seven films that are being produced right now. Some of them are completed. And we have a number of online series that are already in production that you'll be watching over the next coming 12 months. Something very important for us, and it's, it's just the nature of Indonesia that makes our company so successful here and keeps outsiders from being successful here is that local, local content is required to be a success. And it's not easy for someone to come into Indonesia and make a, an Indonesian production. It's not just the content or the, the IP, it's the working relationships with all of the producers and directors and actors and cinematographers, um, script writers, et cetera. Because we have the largest market share, we also have the most relationships in that space. And by uh, if you look back in 2015, uh, one out of every five dollars in the movie theater went to a local Indonesian movie. So only 20% went to local Indonesian producers in 2015. And here we are in 2023. Actually, 2022 is going to be the first year where Indonesian revenue, Indonesian local revenue is greater than Hollywood movies. We're gonna be over 50% of the box office went to local productions. And it should be noted that MD produced the largest share of those local movies. So 2022 has been quite good to us in the movie theaters. Um, the other thing that's changed dramatically since March of 2020 is that online really took off. Finally, online commerce took off in Indonesia. It's happened all over the world. Indonesia was just a little slow because of the infrastructure difficulties. It was expensive to get broadband back in 2019. Expensive and difficult to find it, especially if you're outside of one of the major metros. But that's changed. It's changing every day. And in 2020, when the movie theaters shut down, online viewing of video services increased in Indonesia by 40% in just six months. Now, online video is one of the things that benefited from this increase in online activity. It's not just video, but you know, online commerce and banking and education and shopping, all of these took off. For online video, it's interesting that entertainment is what I'll call recession proof. It's pandemic proof. 
people always want entertainment, no matter what the condition of the economy is. And this list of logos that you see on this page, from Netflix to video, WeTV to Amazon and iTunes and MaxStream, all of these companies are our customers. We supply the largest amount of movies and TV shows for all online streaming platforms in Indonesia. We have the largest market share across the board and our content continues to be the most watched content wherever you may find it. Since 2020, the market for subscription video online has gone from seven and a half million subscribers to over 20 million subscribers last year. That's larger than the pay TV business. In just two years, online video shot past pay TV. And what's even more interesting is during the same time period, online viewing of video where consumers don't have to pay, this is called AVOD, or Advertising Video On Demand. AVOD business in Indonesia is now over 150 million people a month that are tuning into a free video service. And as it relates to MD Pictures, free video service does not mean our content is free. We still charge for it. We charge the platforms, video.com, WeTV, all of these that have free services are paying us for it to have our content on their service. And for very good reason. If you look what happened, this is for WeTV and iFlix. When we launch a hit TV show on their platform, this happened to be, I think it was the series, My Lecturer, My Husband. The day after that series hit their platform, their app became the number one and the number two most downloaded apps on the Android store, number one and number three on the Apple store. Consumers are not loyal to any of these platforms. They're loyal to the content and they're going to get whatever app, whatever TV channel, whatever movie theater they're gonna to go to, to watch the movies and the film and the shows that they wanna watch. So this is a great example. Back in the TV business, when we would produce a hit show, audience would move to that TV channel. In the online business, when we produce a hit show, the audience moves to that online app. Leong and Putis came out in the middle of last year and that was just a phenomenon. Over 15 million viewers in one day. Many of these viewers had never heard of WeTV, which was the only place to watch this show at the time. We have later put it out on TV channels as well in second runs. Um, and we have more Leong and Puchas coming to you over the next coming months. Now, during 2020, movie theaters went asleep. They, went, they were closed down and even when they opened, not much was happening. Until the end of 2021, our movie that we put out in December of 2021, Dua became the number one film for the year with 1.7 million tickets sold. And that's a great number for even a non-pandemic year. So we said, let's put out another movie and let's see how those movie theaters are doing. And in the first quarter of 2022, Kukura Ruma became the largest movie in 2022 to date at the time with over 2.2 million tickets. And that's, that's a hit movie. So movie theaters came back strong even though the, the audience is very selective. I mean, if you look at this, we had you know, very high numbers for the number one movie, but movies number two, three, four, you know, there's a big, big difference. It's not that easy to just make a movie, drop it into the theaters and make a lot of money. But when you have a good movie, it does very, very well. As evidence, and I'm sure you all know, in Q2, we released KKM, Di Desapanari, and it broke every record in Indonesian film history. Over 9 million tickets and counting. Um, we re-released it in December with uh, additional minutes 
So just um, about a month ago, with 40 extra minutes of you know uncut and unseen. And so we're now over almost 11 million tickets sold, which is just phenomenal. Um, and it's not just in Indonesia. It broke records in Malaysia and in Singapore. And it's breaking records around the world. It's one of the first times that Indonesian content is finding an international audience. So I'm going to look at some statistics. Um, what I have here is the first half of 2022. And during the first half, MD earned 58% of the box office for Indonesian films. We had one, two, three, four films in the top 15 and no other studio had more than one movie in the top 15 during the same time period. Now, I'm not saying we don't have competition and we're certainly not, uh, we're not playing it safe, but you can see this is a tradition that has continued since we made our very first films and made our first TV shows. MD has scale where we can produce a large number the largest number of films and shows in Indonesia. And we have quality where our shows are being enjoyed by more viewers, bigger audiences than any other studio. So in a time when movie theaters were coming back in the top five films in the, in the first half of last year, three of our films were there. And of course, Kaka N was very, very high, but look at two, three, and four very close running and all of those are extreme successes. And then something else happens when we're, now that we have online and theater, the synergy between the two is really, really helpful for our business. If you look on the left-hand side here, um, this is on week 36 in 2022. This is on Disney Plus in Indonesia. Film number one, two, five, and eight are all MD Pictures movies. MD has films one and two on Disney Plus. This is bigger than Star Wars, Doctor Strange, and Lightyear and Thor. Bigger than Frozen and Pinocchio in the children's programming. Indonesians are tuning into Disney Plus. They're signing up to Disney Plus to watch our movies. Now, let's look at Amazon. Amazon's a brand new customer of ours. They came in last year, about a year and a half after Disney was already here. We've licensed a number of films, many you've not even seen yet on the Amazon Prime platform. But here we are in our first six months with Amazon and our films are three out of the top 10. This, um, I, I can only urge you to tune in to Disney Plus and Amazon Prime. Um, over the next couple of months, you're going to see a lot more content from MD coming. Okay, so that's our business highlight. Um, on the financial side, I've got financials through Q3 of last year. We have not announced uh, Q4 yet, uh, but what I can tell you is that 2022 is very good to us. And I think we are very, very good to the film and TV business in 2022. So uh, we can only say that it's exceeded our expectations. We fully believe 2023 will continue our trends. Um, and Anand, I'll turn it over to you to explain uh, what you're looking at on this slide. Thanks, Dave. So if we see the 2022, Third quarter, we have booked a revenue of around 382 million uh, billion with a gross margin of around 70%, over 70%. And if you see the net margin, which we, we have booked a profit of around 151 million with a margin of around close to 40%. So if you compare from the last since the IPO, we have actually booked the highest top line uh, versus since the last uh, the IPO we have got listed, right? So technically, if you see, we have been doing very well internally from a company financial perspective in terms of top line and bottom line. Now, if you see the composition of the revenue allocation in the 2022 versus 2021, you will see that 2021 since the bioscope was almost in a closed mod, 
our most of the revenue that was coming in our financials was coming from digital. We were having around 86% of our revenue derived from digital content. And just you move to 2022 when Bioscope opens up, we start launching our basically content in the Bioscope and you can see the flip of the proportion and the composition of the revenue. Almost 75% of the revenue that is coming from the cinema uh, directly. But that does not mean basically that our digital revenue has gone. First point is if you compare 2021 and 2022, our revenue has almost doubled compared to what we were in 2021. That means the bigger proportion of the revenue we are capturing in 2022. And second point is we are just trying to allocate and move our content in a right way so that we can monetize more, maximize more against each content in terms of revenue. So that is what you can see. Whatever revenue we have generated in 2022 per content is much, much higher compared to what we have done in 2021. Right? So this is in short financials performance, which looks very strong in terms of cash flow, in terms of the margin of the company. And then if you see the balance sheet part, so balance sheet part, if you look into the balance sheet part, the company is debt free. We don't have any bank debts or a third party debts in our balance sheet. Our Balance sheet is very light with a account payable and also in a very small proportion because our business model is such that you basically, you know, it's it's not about uh, holding too much cash or observing too much cash in the account payable or receivables basically. So when what happens is we continue to have the production and our basically revenue keeps coming for a TV content on different tranches or different basically milestones. And cinema is the only content where basically we incur an expenditure first and basically the revenue comes after we release the content, right? So that is how, uh, in short, I would say, the margin looks very good. The balance sheet looks light and debt-free. So we are on a right track uh, uh, as per the performance of 2022. And I could give you a hint of 2022, how we are going to close it. I think we have already touched 382 around on the top line. You can expect the trend to be there and we may close somewhere the top line between 400 and plus minus 450 uh, milliard uh, as a year closing. And we are looking into 2023. Uh, we, are, uh, we are going to have, a, uh, this year also, we are expecting to have a very good year because we have a lineup of big IPs release, which is going to come in 2023. So we are expecting 2023 to along uh, also to be very, uh, you know, very good year for us. Thanks. Okay, so there's our story. Um, I know we covered a lot of ground and there's a lot of things that we have not discussed. Um, why don't we turn this on over to any questions from those that are here and we'll listen to you and see if we can help you better understand our business and what we, where we're headed. Okay, thank you, uh, Dave. So before we go to the Q&A, we will have a, uh, a brief technical analysis discussion with William. William is right here right now and he will give you all a, a brief technical analysis on what is film currently doing and what is the prospect from a technical standpoint. So William, the time is yours. Uh, oh, thank you, Faras. Let me open my slide here. I'll share the screen first. Right. For the MD pictures, let's show how the market in general first. The composite index shows that we have rebounded from the support 6630. And then we say that in this first quarter of 2023, we'll go to the resistance 19650 to 7130. But that will take uh, quite a while. It's not exactly on maybe in like within one or two months. But I expect that since we're now about to enter the long weekend of this Chinese New Year, the market will be quite stagnant for a while. 
But then again, since we have rebounded from the support 6630, our composite index is about to continue its strong rally for a while, just a little bit, and then it might not continue after it hits the resistance at 650. But then again, we are about to see how the market continues after the Chinese New Year. That's why I give you two main resistance that we're about to hit. Uh, beyond that, uh, that's, uh, let's see how the CDX cycle, the one that film is within, uh, how it will goes perform. The IDX cyclical, however, is within downtrend channel aggressively. Since for quarter 2022, uh, it seems like it has not rebounded yet. We are now testing the support of 807, and there's risk that this, uh, the sectoral itself is hitting the risk breakdown support. Hmm, that's quite unfortunate because when I compare to the films, films is in actually within a strong very situation. Once it hits its 3,000 major resistance, Film uh, unfortunately has not continued its rally that we've seen uh, uh, has begun like uh, from the second half of 2022. Here, since fourth quarter, we see that this film has been in, in a strong downtrend channel. It has retested this uh, support of 12.00 today. It hit this 12.00. We presume that this film will continue its uh, bearish momentum. Uh, the, the closest level that it could hit after it breaks down from 12.00 OO will be 1,000, at least a strong psychological level. However, if this downtrend channel is got broken, that means it's broke up, the breakout will make film retest the resistance. The closest will be in 1750 around here. The 1750 here is the one that has been this uh, flip level of film from second half 2022. We expect that this could happen only if this aggressive downtrend channel is got broken. So we have to wait. For now, I presume that this 12.00 tomorrow will be seen. We have to see whether tomorrow we could close above this 12.00. If it go above 13.00, this will be better. But for now, since this is as close as the support level that's got retested, I still fear that this uh, bearish momentum has not ended yet. So we must be careful here. Of course, if it's got broken, this will be chance for the film to retest at the flip level around here, 1750. So just be careful. Just because this downtrend channel is not broken yet, I have a feeling that this momentum will continue for a while. And then again, we're about to enter long weekend, so maybe film will consolidate around this 1200 for a while. So I think that's all for the technical update for film. Let me return this to Faras, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, William, for the brief technical analysis for film and, and, and the overall market. So mm -hmm. now we'll open the floor for the Q&A session. And we, we have actually a couple of questions right now in the Q&A box. Um, so I will ask the first question is, the, the first question comes from Leonard. Uh, how many targets movies produced by MD on a yearly basis? So if KKN okay. was very so successful, why does MD only produce one movie? Maybe we can start the question, the Q&A session with that question, Dave. Sure, no problem. Um, so first of all, you know, how many movies do we produce a year? Um, I, I think our, there are only so many weekends a year. And back in 2019, I think we put out 22 films and we realized that was too many. We started competing with ourselves. We were competing for our, against our own films in the movie theaters. The number of screens of movie theaters is pretty limited in Indonesia. It's only about 2,700 screens. So um, we're being very careful. I think in 2022, I don't quite understand. We produced, um, I think we released 14 movies in 2022. Uh, five of them went direct to OTT. The rest went into theater. Some of those had been produced during, actually made during the pandemic or even before. Like Kaka N was produced in 2019, the end of the year, and we held on to it for two years, uh, waiting for movie theaters to come back. So um, we we made we released or licensed a total of 14 movies last year. Uh, five of them are going direct to OTT platforms, and you saw actually um, like Ayu Putus is a good example that went uh, straight to OTT on. Amazon Prime Video, and it's their number one watched movie. So to much success, it's made our customers very happy. 
Um, how many are we going to make going forward? Well, our mission is to maximize the return on every single piece of content so that we're getting the maximum return on our investment. And that means that we are producing perhaps nine to 12 movies this year in that range and um, approximately one a month. We may skip a month and let the movies ride. Let them ride in the movie theater for a while and get the most out of them. And then after they're in the theater, we turn right around and license them onto OTT platforms. In fact, one, two, three, four, six of the films that are not even out yet have already been pre-licensed to OTT platforms based purely on our reputation and the value of that of uh, those titles. So um, I think that answers the question. Okay, thank you, Just Dave. To add on, you know, uh, okay. uh, uh, when the production, basically, when you say the how many movies or things are there, normally at any point of time, you will see 20 or 30 different projects are worked on, but there are different stages. They are more on a pre-development stages, development stages, pre-production stages, production stages, and then post-production stages, right? When those projects are at different stages, we basically allocate how many movies we want to, you know, uh, target for the next 2023 and 2024. So that is how the allocation works out in film industries, right? So there are a lot of projects that go on. And then according to that projects, and we decide which stages we want to move on and which products we want to move on to 2023, we want to push to 2024. So that is how the stocks and inventory of the film works on. Okay, Thanks, thank you, Anand. And so the, the second question is actually comes from Leonard also. Uh, can you, okay. Can you tell us uh, a bit about the market share for WeTV in the OTT platform? And can you, can you, can you get, give us some guidance on what is your revenue and net profit for the fourth quarter in 2022? Is it going to be a positive one or do you have some comments on that? Okay, well, I can ask, I can answer the, some of the knowledge about uh, market share. Um, it's, so WeTV is one of the, they're in the top five of market share. Um, they are uh, very low in market share for subscription services because most of their revenue comes from advertising. So I think they're around a 2% share for subscription services and about a 5% share for um, advertising supported services. Um, however, I mean, bear in mind, I mean, everyone's our customer. So uh, the largest subscription service out there right now in Indonesia is Disney Plus. Um, they're, I think, approximately 30% share in subscription services, 0% in advertising supported because they don't have advertising tier. Um, we will see um, Amazon Prime. We don't have record numbers on it yet. They just got introduced. Last I saw in 2022, they were in a very small subscription base. Um, we have some high hopes. They seem to be doing quite well. Um, and um, let's see, the next question, uh, the next half of that question, I think I'll turn over to you, Anand. Could you repeat that, please, uh, Faris? So the fourth question is, uh, can you please share your guidance for revenue and a profit in the uh, fourth quarter of 2022? Sure, I think uh, during our presentation session, I've given the hint, uh, you know, how, how it wrap up is our revenue is very much you can, you can, if you get a clue, you can do it because more, most of our revenue is well much, you know, aired on the aired on the television or in the OTT or in the cinema. Uh, you know, big cinema screens, right? So what I'm expecting a revenue to be in the, in the uh, by closing, basically, we will be closing a revenue of around maybe close to plus minus 450. And our uh, bottom line will be most probably in the same range according to the increase. Basically, we are carrying over like around 39 to 40% of the margin. So you will see a similar trend in the last quarter as well. Uh, and on the other side, I think there is another question that how much is the composition of the revenue that is coming from VTV and the uh, and the other platforms. I think uh, what happens is this composition keep changing every quarter, right? It depends upon which platform actually airs how many of our content at a particular quarter. 
you might have seen in the previous, like if suppose VTV is hearing a lot of content from MD, the proportion of revenue from VTV will go up and other platforms may go down. If suppose next quarter Disney or Amazon or Netflix aired a lot of our content, the revenue from the, those digital platforms will picks up on those quarter and the other, other platform will go down. So it's purely depends upon how these platform basically plan to air of our, our content and accordingly the you know the revenue recognition happens in the books okay thank you Anna. thank you Dave. Yeah. everybody please run out to the theater and go see um um Hidea, which is playing right now another horror movie absolutely true um and um when i i'd urge you to go get amazon prime video and there's ivana ayuputas um, sign up. If you make them happy, they'll make me happy. Thanks, everybody. Anything else? Okay. Thank Anything you. Else, okay. If, if there's any more questions from the from the, from the audience. Okay, if not, uh, I think we can close this session right now. So thank you so much for Dave, Anand, and also William for presenting. Mm -hmm. And also happy Chinese New Year, everybody. Happy hope Chinese this, New Year. Hope this Chinese New Year be a blessing for us all and also can give more prosperity for, for us all. And hopefully we can go back to, 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 the level, to the level and evaluation that, that it should is. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, we will see you uh in the next event and don't forget to invest in film stock right now at this very attractive price to start some more trading uh, some more trading active active real time and we'll see you in the, in the next event okay thank you so much everybody see you around thank you thank you thank you thank you, Dave. Bye -bye. Thank, you Anna. thank you william bye